What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk to you about my favorite ways and what I think are the best ways to increase your income. Just like in that video I made last week, if you want those financial tips to be able to save more and get out of debt a lot quicker, here's the thing, you already know how to save. I can give you a bunch of tips and tricks. I can you know, help you make it easier and not really have to think about it as much, but as a whole, we, we know how to save money, let's be real. But a lot of us don't have that skill of making more money, so I want to dedicate this entire video on practical ways to make more money. So that's what we're gonna do in today's video. So in today's video, I'm gonna give you two ways. Uh, this pertains to anyone who's hardworking, who wants to make more money and feels like they're overworked and underpaid the whole nine. I mean, those are the types of things and pain points that I want to address today. So I was actually on LinkedIn the other day. I'm finding myself on that social media platform more and more daily because I think it's pretty interesting. It's a nice, clean form of social media. You don't have to worry about seeing too much nonsense on LinkedIn. And they have very, very helpful articles and carousel posts just like they do on Instagram. So I'm gonna share one with you right now. I'm gonna go ahead and record my screen so you can see this too. This is by Justin Welsh. I don't know the guy, but I thought he gave very insightful advice and I just wanna share it with you. So this is what it says. It's your job, you might get a 5% pay bump each year. So if you make $40,000 this year, it'll be $42,000 next year. That's a raise by 96 cents. Here's another option. Build income through curious self-education. It's very important, check this out. So the first thing is find something that you're genuinely curious about and do a deep dive on figuring it out. For example, for me, it was personal finances. I didn't know a ton about it, but I wanted to educate myself. So for one, I wouldn't make bad financial decisions, but two, so I could build a nice nest egg of money and know what the heck I was doing financially so I could be savvy and not have to live paycheck to paycheck and make the most amount of money possible. So that was my reason. But anyway, the next step is to take notes about everything you tried, what worked, what didn't, what you learned, best practices, and what surprised you. Then what do you do next? This is what you do next. You share what you've learned. So get online and share everything. It might be on YouTube, it might be on Instagram, it might be on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. I've used all of these platforms. But you tell people who the content is for and what it will help them do. So this channels about personal finance and personal growth. This is for hardworking adults. This is for young adults. This is for people who are trying to get started with personal finances and want to know what to do. And this is also for people with money who want to understand where to put it. Because if you have a lot of money, but you don't know where to put it, you can lose and will lose a lot of money. So I'm here for those things. And what happens is over time of you sharing this type of content, people will want help and they will ask for it because they will watch a video or they'll read an article and they'll still have questions. They'll feel like they've gotten some of the right steps and they kind of know what to do, but they want that in-depth advice and they want to invest in something that they know is gonna educate them well so they can have the tools that they need to succeed in life. So you set a fair price and you start using your time to solve their problems in exchange for pay, of course, and you keep an eye on the repetitive problems. And then you write down the top 10 challenges that you solved and how you solved them. Put these in the short video course or ebook that people can buy for a reasonable price. And then congratulations, you now have a small service or product business. This product could be in the form of ebook, course, coaching, one-on-one -on -one sessions, things like that. And I actually didn't know this, but the good news is there are 4.9 billion potential customers online. So what this man is saying is what I've also been saying for years and years and years, and that's if you don't wanna wait for a raise and you're not happy with how quickly your raise or like how quickly your salary is growing, you don't have to wait on a raise. You can give yourself a raise. Chances are you're gonna move a lot quicker than your raises would. So go create one. So essentially that is my number one favorite way. I've done it myself as you know, but you know, it started as something that started off as a hobby. I was I was genuinely curious about money. I was curious about how to make more money. I was curious about should I work all this overtime or should I make something of my own? And that question was very blurry for me for a long time. And the answer honestly is if you want to do both, you can 100 percent do both. And I didn't know a lot of things at first. I didn't, you know, I didn't have a ton of questions about how to save money, but I had questions about, well, 
now that I am making good money, and now that I do know how to save and pay off debt, how do I build this income to make it actually work for me behind the scenes? And, you know, if I'm not good at that, how do I use money to invest in myself to then create a business that brings forward more money? So I had all these types of questions and I was just doing research and research and research. And I was taking tons and tons of notes. I was reading books. I was reading articles. I was watching YouTube videos. And I began to try certain things. And whenever something didn't work, I wrote it down. I made either a mental note of it or I put it like in my actual phone. And I gave literal advice to my future self. Hey, don't try this because this, this, and this can happen. And that was kind of how I came to that conclusion that I didn't agree with all of Dave Ramsey's advice because he generally tells you to save your first $1,000, then put most of your money towards your debt. You can stop contributing to your savings now, pay off debt heavily, and then come back and build your emergency fund. It's like, ah, uh, I hope 2020 doesn't happen again because if I would have tried that in 2019 and then 2020 came and I got most of my debt paid off. And then let's say my job for some reason laid me off, like a bunch of people got laid off and I wasn't prepared for it. I would have had a thousand dollars to my name and that wouldn't have lasted even a month. Just saying, that's, that's not what you want. Speaking of layoffs, go ahead and check out my Instagram account. I give more financial advice on Instagram that is different than what I give on YouTube. And the latest advice I just gave out on Instagram was how to suspect and pretty much how to see a layoff coming and what to do about it and what websites can give you that type of access. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out. I also have a bunch of reels on Instagram given the short form content that's you know, more entertaining for those who don't really want to watch a long form video. I'm starting to become more thoughtful of the different types of people that watch my content and enjoy my content. But some might like the longer form, some might like the shorter form, and some like the carousel post where you get a quick education on something that you can quickly apply to your life. I'm here for all of that. I'm here to help you. But anyway, I say all of that to let you know. I wrote the mistakes down and I was able to self-educate very quickly by writing down what went right, what went wrong, and I was able to build a YouTube channel. Then after I got credibility on YouTube and I had a bunch of things that already happened in my life to literally back up my YouTube channel, and pretty much tell you my journey, not just from like a YouTube channel perspective, but also in a book. And then also it wasn't all about me. I just gave you little bits and pieces of my journey and what it looked like just to compare what you might be going through and also give you that practical advice that you can apply to then build wealth and make your money grow and be in the best position that you can be in financially. It didn't just go over like how to save. Like I didn't write a whole book about that. I wrote a whole book about how to start your wealth journey from beginning and what it's gonna look like toward the end. In the timelines, all that good stuff, I give you career advice because I am a manager and I do know what we look for. You know, I hire people on at my job and, and I give you insight on what we look for in potential candidates and potential future employees. I give you interviewing advice. I give you industry advice, like which industries pay the most, which industries, if I was starting over again, which one I would go for, what kind of salaries you could expect starting off and five years from then, what salary you could expect to get. I have a whole chapter that breaks down how to make more money, all this type of stuff. These things are extremely, extremely important. And also give you mistakes to stay away from. I also show you how to assess the cost of living before you actually make financial decisions about where you'll be living, not being afraid to relocate, all kinds of stuff. And if you haven't read my book yet, go ahead and check it out. I will link it up here. But this isn't just to make a selling point about my book. It's just to tell you that because I did everything that this carousel post said in the Twitter feed, even without having read it first, I'm just validating everything that he has said. And that is my favorite way because you can easily diversify your income. My book is gonna be up forever. This YouTube channel, you know what I'm saying, ain't going nowhere. I'm not taking it down or anything. My Instagram posts, they're not going anywhere. I also have a Patreon page. So I have all these other things. And even if there's not a ton of traffic coming in immediately, Slow and steady wins the race. That's what it's all about. And on top of that, it builds you that confidence. And if 
frankly, it makes you a better employee at work because if you can work for yourself and you have that work ethic, you can work for hours and hours and hours and really be focused toward a goal that no one is over your shoulder telling you what to do or no one is from a distance telling you what to do. You're thinking about the planning. You're thinking about what's going to be in the future. You're thinking about what results you want. You're thinking about what things you need to hit. I know I need to hit a certain amount of videos every single week. I know I need to edit a certain amount of videos every single week. I know if I want to write a book, I know how many hours per day I'm spending on that book to have it done by a certain time. Nobody's telling me to do this. No one is suggesting or even encouraging me to do this. I'm doing this all on my own and it feels amazing to be able to do and once you produce things like hold on a second like this book right here and right now i'm still working on my audio book and i'm working on an online investing course once you prove to yourself time and time again that you can complete these passion projects you gain that confidence and at work literally work seems easier because you're able to knock all these things out outside of work without even really feeling tired or anything you go to work and it's like oh this is nothing this is, and so you become even more valuable at your company. So for me, it's a win-win. Not to mention the fact that all those things I just listed are literal streams of income that come in every single month. So it's just something to think about. Moving on, along the lines of what I just said about becoming a better employee, here is how, if you still don't wanna wait for a raise, this is how you can kind of fast track it. It's gonna happen about every two years, but it's gonna happen at a much quicker pace than if you steadily wait every year for a little raise. And that post that we just read, um, that was saying you might get a 5% raise. A lot of folks get 4%, some get lower. Some, some people don't even get raises because their companies don't have the funding to do so, or they didn't perform highly enough to then get the raise, or their company told them they didn't perform highly enough to get the raise, and they didn't do their due diligence about their own work and take the notes about their own work and say, no, actually, I did do this. These were the improvements that I made. This is the value that I've added to this company. This is how many more people I brought in. This was how I worked on retention. This was how I worked on process improvement. This is how I gained the company an extra, I don't know, million dollars this year. This is the amount of money I was able to help the company save, things like that. These are the things that you kind of want to have a track record for and just take little notes. But that's a whole different thing. I'm just saying if you're about to get a performance review and you feel like someone's going to push back on the self-evaluation that you gave yourself, I think you should already have a list of notes ready to go if someone's trying to say, well, I don't think you did that great. Well, actually, I did this and this and this and this. And this was one outlier that wasn't so great. But this was because of this. And this is what I did, you know what I'm saying, to prevent it from happening again and things like that. Once you come at them with facts and not feelings, they're more likely to get a raise. But now we're going to talk about my rule, which I gave in one of my videos last week. But I want to say it again because, because I think people really sleep on that. Every two years, go for a promotion. Go for a promotion every two years. If you are someone who wants to grow within your career and make some more money, for one, a promotion is gonna be far more than a raise pays you, especially if you're only getting 5% raises. You can get a lot more than 5% with the promotion. In addition to that, you'll have more responsibility. You might have a little bit more pride in what you do. Um, there have been so many people that I know that have been at a role where they feel like they're operating like I guess a skill level or two below what they're actually supposed to be working. And then once they get that promotion, you see a whole new version of them that's just hungry and really trying to get it and just really wanting to succeed and, and help the company succeed as well. So I'd say go for promotion every two years. Now, if you're not able to get that and you're not able to see that growth, something else you can do is every couple of years, once you get that experience in, under your belt at a certain job, you can then apply to another company at the same level or higher. I always recommend aim higher, but you wanna apply for both. Why not? There's no harm in it. And once they see your experience, there's gonna be some company somewhere that's been waiting for someone with your kind of experience and expertise to step foot in their doors and they will be welcoming you with open arms. And in between all of this, like between the period that you're waiting to then go for another position, and it doesn't have to be two years, I'm just giving you a time frame, like at the max every two years. But as you're waiting for whatever the time frame is, 
look online at what companies are looking for within whatever position it is that you're looking to get into. So if you're a supervisor right now, you want to go to manager, or if you're at like a level one job right now, you want to be at like a level two, so for example, technician level one versus technician level two, looking into what types of things are expected from a technician level two, whatever your position is, whatever a step up from where you are now, look at what the expectation looks like. You can look at those expectations and start acting it out right now. Start acting like the position above you. And that's what I've done. I've acted two positions above me before and it's gotten me to a space where I'm looked at and I've been able to get attention from people way, way above me in the company. And that can help you move up faster too. And this has been in both of the companies that I've been at. And outside of just looking at the expectation, and you can generally just ask someone above you what the expectation looks like and, you know, hey, I want to move up. What do I need to do? Blah, blah, blah. You can do that. But you can also look at interviews for that position because online, every kind of interview that you can think of is up there. Every kind of acceptable answer that you can think of is up there. And it's not to study it for how to answer this question. It's looking at the mindset behind each question and the mindset is typically going to be for any industry is to have a winner's mentality, not to make any excuses. If something happens that's out of your control, being able to communicate, Hey, this is out of my control, but this is what I'm doing. Fix it. This is what I'm, this is what my plan is because in business it's all about making plans. Things are going to always happen in business, but what are you doing about it? Because if you're going to just sit there and crawl into a space and say, woe is me, because something ain't going your way, you're not going to be moving up, but so far, but you keep showing that winner's mentality. Like, yeah, this happens. I mean, sometimes you can't control certain things. When I was in my last job, there was floods and nobody showed up to work, but me and like a couple of other people. So what was the plan? It was to clean up whatever was at the workplace. This was my plan. And when people do come up, this is a ramp up plan, you know? So you just have to think outside of the box, but Watch other people who have even more experience doing these interviews and asking these questions. Eventually, you will grasp the overall mindset and you'll see things that you haven't even thought of yourself. And that's what I've done. And when it becomes time for you to actually interview for those positions, guess what? You're going to blow the interview out of the water. Why? Because you pretty much expect what's coming to you. Even if they don't ask you the same questions that were in the video, guess what? You know the mindset that they're coming from when they ask you the question, so you already know how to answer it naturally. Plus, you'll have experience to back up whatever examples they ask you to give in the interview. For example, name a time that you failed and what did you learn from it? And most importantly, how did you recover and how are you a better employee because of it? That's a really good question. They ask that all the time, especially as you move up and up and up. Think about those things. Now, this video wasn't meant to be like a full on career advice thing. I'm just saying you're a hardworking adult. You have a career, right? And sometimes the money's not moving fast enough for us. I understand. So this is a way to combat that. One, you don't have to wait for a raise. You can create your own type of thing and income. And sometimes it might take a little longer to do, or maybe it won't. Because some things you can make money very, very, very fast. But my favorite thing to do is find something that I'm curious about and passionate about, learn about it, take notes about what I learned, share it with other people. It is so fulfilling. Like it's the most fulfilling thing I think I've ever done in my life, to be honest with you. And I've helped a lot of people in a lot of different ways. I've helped people get into shape. I've helped people get stronger. I've helped people become better versions of themselves. But this right here, I think, takes the cake. I really genuinely feel fulfilled. It's nothing like getting a DM on Instagram or, you know, messages or emails or whatever, saying how my content has helped people. And having a one-on-one -on -one with someone, like a coaching session, and they're like, your advice and guidance has helped me so much. That is extremely valuable to me. And also on the career side, I've done that too. It's like I have a two year time frame in my head. And it's like every two years, boom, 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 boom. Either I'm moving up or my salary is going up like majorly. So it feels awesome to know that. But anyway, those are a couple ways. And I think those are the best ways to increase your income as a hardworking adult. And at the very least, they're my favorite. But anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.